What's going on guys, it's Broadman Empire Barbell and today we're gonna to cover a little more periodization. We're gonna talk about how to put in multiple days per week of the same exercise. So following the logical progression of how you start out very new and then build skill and strength and then move on as you get stronger, we can start with the most simplest basic conformation which is a simple linear progression, something like starting strength, doing your sets of fives, adding five to 10 pounds each week, multiple times a week. So on squats, you're squatting three times a week. To be able to add five pounds to your squat three times a week, week in, week out, that's something you can only really do when you're very new. The idea is that you can recover fast enough to handle that increased stress in only a few days. Whereas you get stronger, substantial workouts require more recovery. So you stall out on a linear progression because you are not recovered in that same time period meaning you can't handle the increase in weight, which means you're not going to be exposed to that thing that is going to in turn make you stronger. So we have to space our attempts further apart. So as you progress into something like the Texas method, your uh, harder workouts get spaced further apart. As very strong guys peak for meets, they have to spend more time recovering after their last heavy workout. You get the best squatters, deadlifters in the world, they'll go 20 days before they hit their meat attempt. You know, they'll hit their last heavy attempt three weeks out and then recover because that's how long it takes in between substantial workouts to be able to repeat the same effort at the same level. And that's actually true for maximal weights uh, and also very, very hard volume. So if you're talking about accruing, you know, a certain number of sets and reps with a lot of effort where it's you know, pretty ball, ball breaking, it's gonna be a longer period of time before you can repeat that same effort. So given how common it is to see two or three sessions that feature the same exercise in intermediate and advanced program, the question is how do you fit that in? So the most logical thing to do is to either add a variation or to change the amount of work you're doing. Now I didn't make movement variation its own category because you're still going to in some sense apply these changes in, in work and in sets, reps, and intensity to movement variations. But knowing that that's an option, a lot of people will have let's say a bench day, you might have another day where you do a wide grip, a close grip, a board press, whatever you like, what sets and reps and percentages you pick for that is gonna largely determine, be determined by the type of exercise you're doing. A pin press is not going to be optimized in the same rep range that maybe like a spotto bench would be or a, or a wide grip bench or something like that. So as you start to incorporate those specifically to target weaknesses, you kind of have to be aware of what, which um, rep ranges that weakness is gonna be best targeted at. So that's a whole different can of worms. But variation is a very powerful tool to stave off that overreaching and that backsliding that happens when you do too much too soon. So West Side's a good example. The reason that they alternate workouts every single week is because if you were to train maximally week in, week out with the same exercise, in two to three weeks, it's been shown that you actually backslide. It's not just that you get stagnant, you regress. Your nervous system gets hot, it gets burnt out, it, it fatigues. So even though you feel great, even though you haven't lost weight or you're plenty recovered, you can't handle the same weight and your nervous system won't cooperate. So you either have to deload, which is what people used to do, or you just make subtle changes to the movement and that variation allows you to keep going. So movement variation is an option. That's going to be entirely up to you. I actually prefer specificity. I prefer not to complicate I prefer not to complicate the structure of our work weeks if we can avoid it. If I have a really good idea that somebody's missing this piece of the puzzle and a specific movement's gonna target that, I might incorporate that, but I don't like to get lost in that because there's so many variations. You end up just staring at a spreadsheet and you're not really sure what your next move is because at some point they all seem kind of arbitrary. So Occam's razor, all things being equal, we go to the simplest explanation, the simplest system. We like to avoid pitfalls. We like to avoid overcomplication. So, just assume that we're gonna be running this for the same movement. So we have our three big options for how you're gonna structure multiple days in the same week. You can look at this as a bench, a squat, whatever. I have two different examples of what a weekly progression is gonna look like because both of those workouts or all three or four of those workouts still have to progress in some set order. So this is kind of an example of a classical linear progression, sorry, classical linear periodization because volume is dropping, so sets and reps are dropping, intensity is going up. This is more of a linear progression where we're keeping uh, sets and reps constant and just adding weight. This is like something you'd see in like Bill Starr's power program or the Texas method. There's a fair amount of programs out there that work like that. That's also even more simple. That's a very good option. And as you get more advanced, the complexity you add doesn't need to be 
and doing all these endless changes with how you progress week to week, it can be with how you counter this with another workout in the same week. So the first logical change is gonna to be to have a heavy light day. Assuming you're starting with something like a simple linear progression, you can't progress two to three times in the same week. So instead we just progress once a week. So we have our main workout and then we have an arbitrarily lighter workout. So in the, both of these examples, you're gonna keep essentially the same prescription of sets and reps. You'll just arbitrarily make the percentage lighter and that allows you to get more practice, more weekly volume in, but you're still gonna be able to recover. Similarly, in uh, the simple five by five linear progression, you can still run, you know, make, you can also make the sets and reps a little lighter as well. There's plenty of examples where it's lower volume and lower intensity. But in this example, I have four sets of five and you're still progressing that 10 pounds every week. It's just 10% removed from what that main substantial workout is. Now you can also keep the percentage constant, that's an option, and cut down on the sets and reps. So if you're getting, let's say, half the volume at the same percentage, that's still going to allow you to recover enough to hit that next substantial workout. So examples like this of these heavy light splits, you're gonna see, let's say, a lot in Soviet literature. These guys have a death grip on the volume and intensity as it changes in an entire macro cycle. But going down to the micro cycle, they even have recommendations for how much volume should be on which day, how it should be spread apart. So reading Shaco's translated text that came out a couple of years ago, he was citing sports scientists that recommended having, let's say 45% of the volume on one day and the rest of the volume split between two other days. So you'd have kind of a, the highest volume day and then a couple of low medium volume days. And it, it essentially follows the same idea. You're just arbitrarily distributing the work in different capacities. So again, those are known for being very complex. They go through like wavy progressions where the, the intensity of volume is decoupled. And unless you're in the mind of the guy that wrote it, it, it's hard to see the pattern unless you take the scope way back. We like simpler modes of doing things because compliance will be higher and there will be fewer pitfalls. So you can very easily apply that to these simpler modes of progression by just having an arbitrary day where you do less. Now this is hard for a lot of people to get their head around because especially as you get stronger, one of the reasons people plateau is because they can't get themselves to work lighter on a day where they're supposed to work lighter. That is a huge problem because everybody thinks that unless you're going to the nth degree, unless you're redlining it, that you're not going to progress. So where people should be taking their foot off the gas and allowing recovery, instead they're just trying to hit that brick wall until they break through. Everybody's gone through that, I've gone through that, and it's entirely counterproductive. It's not how you need to be thinking. You actually need to be smarter about how you parse out those, those hard substantial workouts, and arbitrarily doing less work on one day is a good example of that. Then we can get into volume and intensity days. Now the emphasis with a volume intensity day is to have a day where you do the highest volume, the most amount of sets and reps, and a day where you do very little volume, but instead you are exposing yourself to a harder singular stimulus. So intensity, the percentage should be higher than what it was on the volume day. Uh, I also, on rep work, use effort to kind of fill that in. So on this example of that same linearly periodized scheme where volume drops and percentage climbs, now we have a heavier day where we're just doing, again, very low volume. We're just doing one hard all out set at a higher percentage. So if our tens were done at 60%, now we're gonna do, let's say an AMRAP at 70%. That's a good example, one set and done. Volume is low, effort is high. Percentage being higher is a key component of that. Uh, I wouldn't pair tens with like a max triple, but we can still get effort in and have that theme of having offset intensities that both tend to both tend to climb up together on the simpler five by five linear progression and you see this in like the texas method you offset your five by five day with the day where you just hit a top five you hit a max five and both of them progress at the same rate the five by five volume or sorry the five by five intensity 70 percent is a little lower than what you're going to hit on your top five so again they're offset and they run up together that works very well uh, there's been quite a bit written about different confirmations because you'll see these blended together. Uh, Texas Method, Bill Starr's power program, they're kind of blended together. Uh, Texas Method has a volume day, an intensity day, and then it has an arbitrarily lighter recovery day. So it kind of follows the heavy light split and the volume intensity split. Andy Baker has a lot on his YouTube channel about how to run heavy medium light splits. That It's basically this with three days a week where you have your substantial workout, he has his recommendations for how he likes his lifters to do that. 
and recommendations for arbitrarily backing off the work through the rest of the week. And it becomes a lot more manageable to run that up consistently as you get stronger and make adjustments as you go. So I recommend checking his videos out. Uh, then we go to our third option. Now, I do not write a lot about di uh, daily undulating periodization. I feel like it has been beaten into the ground. It's an example of people in my position needing content to write about. So there've been so many articles written on DUP and for some reason it gets focused on academic studies and trying to compare against different models of training. I am hard pressed to think of any very accomplished lifter who has gotten to the top off DUP. I can't think of it off the top of my head. For all the articles I've seen, all the studies I've seen, athletic coaches tend to like it because you can currently train different qualities. So size, strength, speed is common. So if you had a the same progression, you'd have a day where now you're just working different thresholds. It's not about the actual volume or how difficult it is. It's about what threshold you're working in. So we have our volume, then we have our strength, and then we're doing, let's say, a lot of triples at lightweight. That's our speed component. This is usually how it gets represented. That makes sense for athletic programs. For power lifters, uh, or people who are mainly concerned with strength, scratch that speed day and replace it with a maximal strength day, which would be the same rep range as at heavier percentages. So for your threes, I mean, you would go 60% for 10s, 70% for sixes. You'd be up at like 85% for your threes. That's gonna be more maximal strength. It's gonna be less about speed. Anyways, this, uh, it's not as commonly executed for as often as I see it pop up and I usually recommend against it. This is essentially what Smoloff is. If you see the base mesocycle for Smoloff, it, it is DUP, it's nine, sevens, fives, and threes for a ton of volume and you progress linearly over three weeks. I think one of the big pitfalls is the, the method of progressing from mesocycle to mesocycle from three to four week blocks is a lot less straightforward because at the same time you're filling out your volume stuff or logically you'd be re getting ready to transition, you've already filled out your intensity work. So you're already up at these high percentages. So it's not as straightforward how you would progress over let's say 12 or 15 weeks. And there's coaches who are good at applying their tweaks. Again, it looks sexy, it pulls people in. People love the idea of concurrent training, of doing all things at once, because it's like, oh, I'm just gonna get gains times a thousand. And people are almost universally better off, not just as far as what's optimal in like the truest sense of the word, but what they're most likely to comply with and not fall into a pitfall with is gonna be something that's more simple, more straightforward. So I recommend focusing on filling your week out with just reduced percentages, putting all your eggs in the basket of the, the one substantial workout you do, focus on driving that up for each phase that you're in, you'll have a better go about it. I am a huge advocate of not deadlifting yourself into the ground. So many people deadlift multiple times a week. I hate it. I deadlift once a week, sometimes every other week, and I'll substitute it with either speed deads or some variation to allow recovery. I recently started deadlifting twice a week and I'm getting very good results. The key is that the work I'm doing is very reduced. So it's not two days a week of hard work. I have a base volume day that I'm working on progressing. And then I have a day of very light work that's more about accumulating a little bit more volume throughout the week, keeping the movement fresh, you know, getting blood in the joints and the main movers and keeping myself really dialed into that movement. And I'm having very good results so far. But remember, as you get stronger, as you get more advanced, knowing when to recover, when to make your work just kind of recovery based is going to be huge and keep you going as time goes on. So long story short, don't just redline it into the ground. It's just as important as to know when to not work hard as it is to know when to push it, when to redline it. So these are your basic options. Uh, like I said, Andy Baker is a good resource on his heavy, medium, light split that he advocates. advocates. It's a very logical progression off what most people do when they're new. It's very simple to run, so I recommend checking that out. If you have any questions about this, go ahead and leave it in the comment box or go ahead and start a thread on the forum and we'll get to it there. Thanks for watching, guys. Again, this is Brahman from Empire Barbell. Until next time, I'll see you.